Uh, my name is Sebastian, and I would like to uh, tell you a story about crafting the private phone. Um, it's basically about uh, the challenges that um, are on the way to create such a private phone, um, and uh, about how we, as a Neo 900 project, uh, want to tackle those challenges. Um, i also uh, tell you a bit about uh, current status of NEO 900, uh, where we are at the moment. So, uh, to start, uh, let's talk um, a bit about what NEO 900 is. Um, is the, uh, it's the match of GTA 04 that was already presented uh, earlier by Nikolaus uh, and Nokia N900. That's a, a famous uh, Nokia Linux based phone um, that was running on um, a MIMO platform. And we, we're actually uh, going beyond uh, that match. Um, Neo 900 uh, it's, it's also a phone that uh, cares about your privacy. Uh, what does it mean? Okay, <laughs> let's start uh, uh, with uh, a bit of uh, specs. Uh, um, Neo 900 will uh, be a bit upgraded uh, com when compared to uh, GTA 04 or uh, N900. Um, it's uh, going to uh, contain a uh, Texas Instruments OMAP 3 uh, processor um, on uh, working on one gigahertz uh, and one gigabyte of uh, RAM. Um, from the um, most important features, um, I think uh, an interesting one is um, a dual touch resistive screen. There's a lot of discussion going on uh, resistive and capacitive screens. Um, and we actually uh, believe that a good resistive screen is uh, uh, um, better for uh, um, projects like that as a, a hacker-friendly phone when you can actually uh, launch uh, any software you want. Um, for um, Neo 900 will uh, contain a um, specifically crafted a, a modern sandbox and monitoring solution, and I'll get back to it later. Um, it's also a very uh, hacker-oriented phone. Uh, what I mean is, uh, we'll uh, we will have a lot of uh, additional interfaces that you, as a user, can uh, utilize to uh, make some crazy projects, uh, whatever you would like, whatever you imagine, and you know how to do it. You, we can st stop you from from doing that. Uh, all of the um, specification, all uh, documentation uh, will be available. Uh, the project is. Uh, is run in uh, open hardware spirit, so um, that's uh, definitely an open platform uh, and one of the most uh, open uh, mobile phone smartphones uh, available on the market. Uh, okay. Let's um, compare the situation um, of uh, how um, um, common, commonly available phones uh, on the market um, look like when compared to uh, platforms like OpenMoco, OpenPhonox, uh, ones like the Neo 900 is. Um, we in common smartphones like iPhones, like Android ones, maybe Windows phones. Um, there's um, a progressing trend of locking down uh, the the software, locking down the user. Um, what does it mean? Uh, the the device 
comes um, as a um, closed package of both hardware and software, uh, and um, the software is uh, um, also highly tied up with um, lots of uh, online uh, services uh, provided by uh, Apple, Google, Microsoft, and uh, companies like that. Um, that's not exactly how um, how uh, our PCs operate. How, what we are used to uh, when computing uh, on uh, desktop uh, computers, on laptops, um, where basically uh, there uh, we are admins of our phones. Uh, <laughs> I mean uh, computers. We decide wh what uh, operating system we uh, want to use. We decide what software we want to use. Uh, we install that that software uh, or not. Um, however, on mobile phones, there's uh, there's a difference because um, there um, nowadays more often than not uh, designed as a world gardens. Uh, that is a uh, closed um, ecosystem. That's, uh, I think, um, uh, trendy word for that. Uh, where um, a company that uh, manages uh, the, that world garden uh, actually have uh, has uh, in control what can be uh, launched, what can be run on that uh, on that platform. Um, as you probably know, uh, there are uh, platforms like app stores um, available on Android, on uh, on iOS, and it's mm, most uh, visible on on iOS actually, where uh, you cannot even launch any um, any software that wasn't accepted, that wasn't permitted to to uh, arrive on uh, Apple's app store. Um, why is that? Why does the cell phone really uh, differ so much from your average laptop or desktop? Uh, technically, it doesn't. It's just smaller and more integrated. Um, technically, there's no reason to to, to lock you down. Um, the Current smartphones um, have uh, computing power uh, comparable to desktops from some years ago. Uh, or so um, I, we can uh, actually run the same s software we launched, uh, let's say, 10 or 15 year years ago uh, on uh, our computers. Uh, now. On, on mobile phones, and that, that's not a, there's no problem with that. Um, however, it's really convenient for um, for the um, companies that um, own the platform. Uh, what's the uh, the problem with such platforms uh, for for users? Um, there's a lack of documentation. There, are, um, there is uh, no information on how uh, stuff in those devices really work. Uh, lots of components are closed uh, without any source code, without drivers for it. So, uh, changing them. If you would like to install your own operating system. Uh, you're in trouble because uh, you would have to uh, write your own drivers. Um, even for common systems like Lin uh, Linux, uh, and yet you, when you don't have documentation, you would have to reverse engineer everything, and that's a lot of uh, effort, a lot of trouble. Um, we would, uh, and that uh, also um, connects with um, with the next point, uh, porting. Uh, I uh, wrote that it's a never-ending story because uh, even if there is some uh, device uh, available, let's say Nexus, uh, that uh, allows some kind of freedom in 
uh, in um, launching uh, uh, your custom operating system, um, it will quickly become obsolete. There will be never one, never once um, that newer. I mean <laughs> that. Mm, um, will uh, quickly mm, move the, your uh, developers from your community uh, to the next device, next next targets, and uh, from from practice, I have noticed that lots of um, projects uh, to to port some uh, operating system on uh, platforms like that are never never really ended. There's always something that's not working, and uh, it becomes obsolete before it's uh, actually finished. Um, there's also a problem uh, in, with uh, getting, um, even if something is uh, is already open, uh, is um, shared with uh, by the. A creator of the, of the device, let's say some kernel drivers, um, it uh, more likely than uh, than not it won't be uh, upstreamed. Uh, it will be just shared in some obscure tab table uh, on some website. And uh, if you would like to uh, to have that driver managed some uh, maintained somehow. Uh, you would have to uh, either maintain it by yourself or uh, hope that the mm, the manufacturer will release updated version somewhere in the future, um, or uh, you would have to uh, to uh, invest uh, a lot of work in uh, getting that drivers into shape that uh, can be upstreamed. Uh, to um, to the upstream project. The um, the big problem is also with uh, so-called planned obsolescence, because there's a um, trend of building um, the devices that uh, aren't designed to to last long. Um, you're rather um, encouraged to uh, replace uh, your your device, uh, let's say each two or three or four years, uh, rather than keeping it uh, longer. Mm, the economical reasons are obvious, um, and the last point on this slide, uh, I think the most important uh, important one. Um, when you have to break into your own device in order to use it as you wish, something is completely wrong. Uh, it's um, something that kind of unimaginable to me that uh, under some jurisdictions in the world, there's uh, it's even illegal to just use your own bought device. Uh, in uh, some specific way. Um, as far as I know, in the United States, there's a um, uh, DMCA exception uh, for phones, so you can jailbreak uh, iPhone, but uh, when you get an iPad, uh, it's not covered by that exception, so you cannot legally uh, use iPad any way you, you would like. So you buy a device, uh, but uh, when you want to do something uh, with a device you own, you, you, you can't. Let's back to the main topic uh, of this presentation, that is privacy. Um, so, how can your privacy suffer? Um, obviously, uh, privacy can suffer from data, le data leaks. Uh, and your data uh, can uh, get leaked via the internet or some other wireless technology or some immovable media. Or uh, your life can be, uh, can be spied on, uh, on location tracking, on uh, audio, video, eavesdropping, or logging your activities, collecting metadata. 
Uh, and um, obviously a, a mobile phone, uh, which is a device that uh, most of us are, um, are uh, most of us uh, have uh, near uh, near us uh, for almost um, whole life, <laughs> whole day at least. Um, that's a very convenient device to to to, uh, to get into some of your private data or uh, into details or details of your life. Um, so, if we would uh, would like to build a device that's uh, strong on privacy. Uh, it turns out that a uh, great first step to do that is to build a mm, good, open, and hackable, hackable device. Um, because uh, that's actually a kind of device that uh, can uh, be trustable, that can um, be transparent to the user. Um, but there's a problem. Even if we build a device like uh, GTA 04 or Neo 900 uh, without uh, using some additional measures, there's a big, ugly, proprietary black box sitting inside it, which is known to often be vulnerable, and it's a basement processor. A basement processor is um, a device that actually uh, connects to the, the, via wireless uh, network to, to the base stations and do the communication with with provider. Um, there's a nice presentation um, by Ralph Philip Weinman uh, told uh, on Black Hat conf uh, conference uh, a few years ago, named "All Your Baseband That Belong to Us." I highly recommend to uh, look at it because uh, it uh, shows um, how easily uh, baseband processors uh, can be actually um, targeted as uh, for, targeted for attacks. Uh, lots of those um, firmwares on, on those devices um, have their roots uh, in uh, 80s or 90s and um, they inherited the, uh, sec all the security approach from, from that time. Uh, so there are lots of buffer overflows, lots of um, <clears throat> lots of basic um, security problems that uh, can be exploited by uh, anyone malicious uh, somewhere near, near your phone. Um, and what's more, what's more scary, the basement processor uh, often uh, has, um, uh, has uh, um, quite a lot of control over the, the main processor which runs uh, the operating system of the user. Uh, like uh, you know, Linux, like Android, like uh, iOS. Uh, so uh, having control just under the, mm, that operating system, that main, op main operating system is not enough uh, because uh, the baseband uh, can actually um, influence that uh, that OS. That's the main problem with projects like like Blackphone, which um, focused on uh, shielding the uh, Android-based uh, based operating system, uh, but uh, totally forgot about uh, how uh, it, how vulnerable uh, basement process can be. Uh, Bayvant, um, recently, there's a, well, maybe not not as recently, but there's a trend of uh, inter tightly integrating the basement with the rest of the system. Uh, it's happening because of lower costs, mainly. Um, 
and uh, two main threats uh, out from that are uh, the direct connection to microphone and direct memory access. The first one um, causes the basement uh, to be able to simply listen uh, to what happens around the phone uh, without any consent of the main um, main system with a constant of, of user. And uh, the second one, direct memory access, um, actually allows basement to do whatever it wants with uh, main uh, main software, main operating system that user launches with any application that uh, the user uses on his phone. Um, and um, shielding them uh, the operating system the, the, that that user uh, actually uses uh, without um, without taking care of the basement reminds me of uh, of the way how um, uh, cannibals on Monkey Island uh, traded Guybrush. Um, if you have, if you're not familiar with the game, I'll explain it to you a bit. Um, <clears throat> Um, at some moment in the game, Guybrush has to uh, to land uh, some bananas uh, from the village, and uh, he gets ca caught by uh, by cannibals, which imp uh, who imprison him uh, and lock the door. But there's a hole uh, in the floor, which leads to a um, exit, um, <clears throat> and. But there's a gag in the game that you can actually um, uh, go back and be caught, uh, caught again. And they strengthen the, the door. And when you uh, escape again and go back, they straighten the door once again. And you can do it once again. And obviously, now that should do it. Of course, you have no problem with escaping once again. So uh, that's just like with with the basement uh, situation. Because uh, when you just keep uh, strengthening the the front door uh, without doing anything with that uh, hole uh, in the floor, uh, you're simply not uh, doing anything meaningful to to secure your your data to. Mm, or anything that uh, happens on your phone, that's that's just not the way. Um, so, what can we do with that? Can we make a basement that is open, that um, can be, um, let's say, audited by uh, anyone on, on the planet, or? Uh, can and uh, which operation can be checked? Unfortunately, it's not that easy uh, because uh, creating um, a basement processor is a really hard uh, task. Uh, there, there is a reason why there are only a few companies uh, in the world that uh, actually uh, produce them that um, instead of just using uh, some licensed technology. And their code bases uh, are really um, many years uh, old. So, um, so starting su such project um, to let's say just just write the um, competitive uh, firmware that could be uh, could be executed on some uh, some basement processor available um, would be really hard. There is um, okay. That that's next slide. <laughs> What's more, you can just write the um, the code and launch it on uh, on the processor because uh, they're just locked. Uh, there are um, cryptographic signatures used by the producers uh, to ensure that only the signed. Uh, versions of the software uh, that were approved by uh, by the manufacturer uh, will be executed on uh, on that device. 
uh, and what's more, there's um, uh, mandatory certification of uh, of uh, those devices because they do uh, communicate over the air, uh, and so that uh, that of course has to comply with uh, legal regulations. And when you change anything in the software uh, of such a device, mm, in most jurisdictions in the world, uh, that voids the uh, certification, so it has to be done once again. Um, and the device that, that doesn't have a valid certification uh, is simply illegal to use. There's a project called Osmo BB. Uh, that uh, actually implements um, uh, free uh, firmware that can be uh, executed on uh, such a basement processor, but it's mm, it's limited uh, to uh, one. It's limited to two uh, G networks, and second one, it's limited to uh, Texas Instrument Calypso uh, basements. Uh, that were mm, used in uh, some old Motorola phones and uh, in OpenMoco uh, devices. Uh, of course, uh, installing such um, firmware uh, on your phone and uh, just trying to use it um, is not uh, that easy. It's illegal, actually. Uh, unless you get some uh, government permissions to, to do that, or you operate it in Faraday cage, uh, and that's not really the uh, bas the basic use case you would expect from operating the mobile phone. Uh, so, um, and and um, Osmo Combi is actually not uh, oriented to. Um, to provide a firmware that uh, can be used as a um, as, as a phone, it's more like um, um, like a research project. However, even if we could um, could produce an open basement, which would f fix a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of project uh, problems. Uh, it wouldn't magically fix all the privacy problems. There are uh, also other threats, uh, like tracking. It can be uh, either based on uh, solely on the uh, wireless network or assisted by GPS. Eavesdropping, data leakage, uh, leakage, security bugs in firmware or even SIM cards. Uh, and of course, uh, direct access to to main RAM, um, which means that, uh, as I said before, if one part of the system is compromised, then the other uh, is as well. Um, there are links to uh, to more details about uh, those tracking um, tracking methods. Uh, I, if you're interested, I recommend checking them out uh, later from the PDF slides. Um, of course, there's also a threat of uh, GSM hacking, um, because uh, if, um, if staff is so vulnerable, um, uh, it's not really hard to do uh, fun, <laughs> or actually argue stuff with uh, with GSM. Anyone with uh, a device, um, with, let's say Osmo PB uh, or some more specialized devices, um, if if you if he ignore the um, uh, illegality of, of such actions, he can actually do, uh, he or she can do a lot of nasty stuff uh, to the network. Uh, the encryption used in GSM 
uh, was actually broken long ago, and it was deliberately weakened uh, when the specs were uh, were created uh, to make life of governmental surveillance ad agencies easier. And uh, if I remember correctly, that was uh, uh, that request uh, came from Brit Britain. Uh, there was a uh, discussion about that. Uh, Germany, especially, was um, um, was for the stronger encryption uh, because uh, they were a bit afraid of um, of countries. Uh, well. <laughs> Uh, that was matter of countries uh, in Warsaw Pact uh, and the uh, countries that uh, didn't uh, that weren't uh, neighbors of, of, of that countries uh, were actually more concerned about uh, stuff like surveillance so they um, wanted weaker encryption uh, and there was a compromise uh, reached which means that uh, there there was actually a stronger uh, method chosen, but um, the last uh, the last bytes of uh, the keys uh, were uh, in the spe specs set to zeros. So actually, uh, that's like that's just like. Uh, uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be uh, those those bits wouldn't be there at all. There's also a threat of denial of service attacks, mm, which are very easy. Mm, there's also a link in this uh, in this slide uh, to uh, the other presentation that shows how um, how to use uh, Osmocom BB based phone. Uh, to actually prevent uh, any um, any phone in the neighborhood or uh, some specifically selected phone uh, from doing any communication with uh, with the base station, so we can easily just uh, use our phone uh, or some other device uh, to make. Uh, impossible to, for others to, to use their phones. So uh, the, actually the only protection uh, from those kind of stuff is the Ill uh, illegality. Um, the GSM standard is uh, is pretty old and there's um, even if uh, things uh, change in the newer standards. There's always a way to to just uh, downgrade downgrade the um, communication to to that old GSM standard. Um, so, in order to to make a phone that w would be really private, uh, it's necessary for it to be trustable, and in order to to make a a uh, phone that is trustable, or any other device, uh, it has to be open. Um, notice that those arrows are uh, directed. That means uh, you can have a f uh, device that is open, but not trustable, and trustable, but not private. Uh, but uh, on the other way around, uh, when you have a private phone, it has to be trustable and open. Um, what's not solvable uh, when it comes to all those threats that uh, are waiting for us and over the air? Uh, we cannot. Uh, really fix um, if dropping of calls, if dropping of internet connection uh, and through alteration uh, while connected to the network. That is um, a method of positioning. Um, um, th those kind of stuff uh, happen outside of the device uh, and uh, through alteration is actually necessary for it to function. That's how GSM network uh, works. It's cellular after all. Uh, so the only way to actually um, do something with that is to encrypt. 
so what's our idea to uh, to deal with all of this stuff uh, we believe in uh, counter surveillance rather than audit and trust uh, why Sim this, it's simply not feasible to to actually audit everything uh, to the uh, level that uh, we can safely trust stuff like that that's say a basement uh, processor which is simply overly complicated that's one and the second thing is that we simply don't have access uh, to to all the information about it so in order to deal with it somehow uh, we need to consider it actually rogue because we don't have uh, uh, full control over it uh, so <laughs> it sounds a bit crazy to to put stuff considered rogue in a phone that uh, strives to be private uh, or trustable um, but um, there is Array in this madness, because uh, we uh, w actually want to sandbox and constantly monitor that okay, stuff, that black boxes that we uh, that we put uh, into the device. Um, so the basement processor is basically locked into a cage. Uh, we uh, carefully select. Uh, the, all the signals that are um, transferred from the main processor to, to the basement processor and vice versa. Uh, and we uh, don't allow uh, any mm, direct access that would could happen uh, without any no uh, any consent of um, of the main system that's controlled by the user uh, so there is uh, obviously no uh, direct connection to uh, microphones or uh, speakers um, that's all controlled by the uh, CPU. Um, all of the stuff like uh, the power lines, um, like antennas, like integrated GPS, um, are monitored. So we can tell if uh, if modem actually does something. Uh, and um, the most critical stuff actually has uh, uh, breakers integrated uh, in it so we can for instance uh, block the uh, GPS antenna that so that the um, modem uh, even if basement even if uh, would like to uh, to use it uh, it won't be able to so thanks to uh, such design uh, design. If the modem is uh, compromised, the main system remains safe. So, uh, if uh, we use the encryption, uh, then um, and follow all of the other uh, good practices of being uh, favored and secure, uh, we should be fine. And uh, in case the modem uh, is supposed to be off, but it isn't, uh, we know that. And what's the most important, we can react accordingly before anything bad happens. Um, the, the same uh, applies to GPS. Mm, so if we notice that uh, that uh, GPS antenna is used uh, in a moment that um, user haven't launched any uh, GPS based uh, application or uh, nothing really is um, GPS related is working uh, on, on the main system uh, we know that something is, is fishy, uh, but here uh, we don't uh, even have to uh, to act 
quick because uh, the antenna will be disabled anyway. Uh, so uh, modem won't be really able to, to use the GPS. And uh, the same with audio. Uh, we uh, can uh, tell the, that uh, modem tries to, uh, to use the microphone, um, but uh, as it won't be uh, directly connected um, to the modem, then it simply won't be able. You can um, control by your own operating system um, what exactly goes uh, into the modem. So uh, you, if you want, and if you really, uh, if you're both paranoid and uh, and you like jokes, you can uh, simply just. Uh, put uh, Rick Astley on uh, on that line uh, and play it all the time and uh, wonder if some NSA ag what some NSA agent will think about you or something like that. <laughs> so, um, so yes, when when modem uh, when baseband acts badly. Uh, user is notified and either automatic hard uh, reset um, or hard shutdown by cutting power can be applied. Um, and what's important, it can be applied. Uh, it's all in the control of the user because user can choose to, to actually ignore that uh, depending on, on the situation uh, he or she is in. Uh, in some cases, uh, when let's say someone is really wor worried about uh, about being tracked and uh, ha is in some situation that uh, that um, requires him to uh, or her to think about it, um, it can be chosen to to actually. Um, um, leave stuff working uh, because um, cutting it out would be, let's say, sus suspicious. Uh, but what's the most important, the user is notified. So the user knows what's going on and the user can, um, can adjust his or her behavior um, accordingly. But yes, so um, for instance, by removing the battery, destroying the device, hiding it under the seat in bus and leaving. But uh, thanks to um, to so, uh, things like external power switch, the uh, user does not really have to uh, to go into such drastic uh, measures. Um, and uh, the basement can be just turned off and never turned on again, for instance. Um, so uh, leaving uh, just an uh, external power switch without any monitoring uh, would be um, problematic in a sense that uh, it uh, wouldn't uh, be able to tell the user that um, that something is going, uh, something wrong is going on, um, and actually that knowledge is, uh, I think, uh, much more important than being just being able to to shut down the device and be sure that uh, it won't do anything uh, fishy behind our back. Uh, there's um, also um, I found some time ago an, an interesting article about uh, that's not really article that was uh, there was co comments on uh, under some article that mm, mentioned an uh, interesting um, uh, interesting thing that uh, can happen on some airports. And there was actually, I think, uh, someone who tried uh, something similar than uh, like our monitoring, uh, and noticed that um, on the airport uh, his phone is 
simply attacked by a, a storm of uh, of, packet, uh, of packets. Um, it turns out that uh, lots of airports uh, actually um, work somehow like a, a Faraday cage and isolate the, uh, the people inside uh, from the uh, networks, uh, cellular networks outside. So um, they have uh, their own uh, base stations installed. So um, so the tracking on the airports can be more effective. Um, so uh, the monitoring like that can reveal uh, some activities uh, like that. So yes, what's uh, what matters is that in the end it's the user who gets the full control over how the device works and how it reacts uh, to to threats. And um, while staying secure might need some effort from the user, um, because obviously even the the most uh, secure, most um, well designed device. Won't uh, won't do anything for you if uh, you simply don't uh, use the common sense while you're communicating with others. Um, but um, when you um, actually mm, uh, <laughs> I got lost. Okay, so. When you use a device that claims to uh, to do all the work for you, um, it can only give you a f false sense of security uh, because uh, because it's uh, not hard to to reveal accidentally even some uh, some things about you. So. Uh, giving a false sense of security is, can be actually worse than no security at all because when you feel confident you can do different things that when you don't feel confident that uh, you when you're careful uh, so it's it's important to to, uh, to remember that uh, we cannot simply um, simply uh, forget about everything and hope that uh, private, secure, and trustable device will do all the work for us. It's not like that. I have uh, collected uh, some interesting resources. Um, that I found when preparing to, to preparing to this presentation, um, there are interesting things about routing SIM cards. Um, it's uh, uh, pretty fun stuff, uh, and fun and scary uh, when you consider that uh, not only uh, the um, stuff that's inside the, the phone that you use can be compromised, but also that little SIM card that you uh, would mo most likely switch to the other phone if you would, uh, for instance, uh, suspect that, that your previous one was somehow compromised. So that would be a SIM card um, because their, um, their encryption is also pretty weak for today's standards. Uh, with newer, newer SIM cards it's a bit better, um, but um, the situation is constantly changing there, so uh, even if so something new is um, um, is introduced, uh, it pretty quickly gets broken. Um, there's an interesting project uh, called GSM Map that um, uses data collected by um, people with Osmo BB devices uh, that mm, shows on a map how secure or insecure are uh, networks uh, in different parts of the world. Um, because um, it's not only phone, it's also the, the network that can be uh, configured in different ways, more or less secure. 
uh, network can uh, demand some authentication or can just um, just accept anything or there's also um, I think one of those links also talks about it uh, a thing about uh, how anyone on the world could with access to the GSM network uh, could actually uh, find out where uh, the recipient of uh, his uh, SMS is located by analyzing how uh, which um, SMS center um, is uh, was receiving uh, the message. And nowadays, as far as I know, um, uh, some protection against that was uh, applied on applied on most of the networks. But that was nevertheless a very interesting thing that something like that was functioning in this way for quite a long time. Uh, there's an interesting uh, report from Harald um, Vete uh, of uh, OpenBSC or Osmocom uh, projects um, about um, uh, how they operated a test network um, in, in the field. Uh, and Mm, there's an interesting uh, part uh, in it about um, GPS assistant uh, assisted tracking um, that the um, base station of the network uh, there's a specification that allows the base station of the network uh, to ask the um, the phone. Uh, the user phone to um, provide uh, uh, GPS data, for instance, to um, for uh, to better uh, location while calling for an ambulance or stuff like that. But what uh, what they found out is, is that when they uh, started to send those packets uh, on their own test networks. Uh, actually, um, none of the um, devices that were used by participants of, of that conference uh, informed the users that uh, the uh, exact location uh, from GPS was requested and sent to, to the network. So it all happened tra uh, completely transparently uh, and um, and turned out that most a lot of those devices implemented that feature. Um, okay. Uh, there's also an interesting project, also from uh, Osmocom guys, um, named SimTrace, uh, which is um, a system for uh, tracing SIM communication between the SIM card and the mobile phone. Uh, it can be used for implementing some kind of SIM firewalls or stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, it's it would be a bit problemat problematic to uh, to implement that um, inside the phone because um, the SIM interface is actually part of the certification. So anything that can tamper with it would probably not be allowed. But nevertheless, it's a very interesting concept and uh, interesting uh, stuff to play with. Um, okay, so um, so now I'm um, that's almost almost the end of the presentation. I would like to uh, tell you about the current status of our project. Uh, almost uh, 400 devices were already been pre-ordered, and that's tw uh, already twice as much as we needed to proceed. At the beginning, we uh, assumed that if we want to get at least 200 uh, of the device to build, then that won't be worth it. And uh, we managed to uh, to reach a figure that's twice as much, and that's awesome. And most of the design uh, is actually finished right now and the schematics are catching up with the design. Um, uh, what's uh, important is sourcing matter is tough. Uh, as components uh, that we need slowly fade away in the market. 
and uh, we will have to do something with that soon. Um, we have an amazing uh, block inter interactive block diagram uh, that uh, was uh, prepared by Vene Amesbeke. Um, uh, it's under the, the link uh, here, uh, which can show you the uh, architecture of uh, Neo 900. And uh, when you uh, when you hover your mouse pointer above uh, any component, you'll get uh, uh, more specific information, links to documentation and stuff like that. So if you plan to uh, to do some very uh, hackish stuff with your Neo 900, you can already start preparing, uh, reading all the schematics and documentation and uh, etc. So, uh, what are the next steps? Uh, we soon uh, will have to start sourcing the risk parts. Uh, the one gigabyte RAM is, uh, the, I think, the biggest uh, one, uh, one of them. Um, there's also a uh, uh, issue of um, the cases, uh, original uh, N900. Uh, once, as um, some of the um, of the pre-orders uh, will be also for the uh, complete devices with the case, not only the the re replacement board for uh, for N900. So. Um, we will uh, have to to order all of this uh, stuff either sooner than later. Uh, so uh, we will uh, have to actually start uh, start uh, getting the the money for for it. So if you um, if you uh, pay the, that minimal 100 uh, euro that uh, was necessary, that is still necessary to uh, to get you on the board, um, then soon we will uh, ask you to uh, to um, to add uh, something in order to to secure uh, to actually buy the parts for you, for your device. And what's mm, the, the most important, uh, the uh, BeagleBot-based prototype uh, is progressing, is expected uh, in February to, to arrive. It will be uh, already able to, um, to quite well um, simulate the the final device. So uh, any work on uh, on software on system integration uh, can be um, quite well uh, done uh, already on uh, with this prototype. Um, so that would be it. Thank you for for listening. Uh, there's uh, the first link uh, goes to to the slides and uh, also check the the second one uh, for other resources uh, we uh, have on um, we prepared earlier and uh, schematics papers feasibility study and recently there was also a paper on um, on um, infrared connection, how it will uh, work on, on Neo 900. You can join the uh, IRC channel uh, on Freenode Neo 900 uh, and ask the um, ask some questions. Uh, we'll be glad to to answer. And I think that that's all. Thanks. Okay, we now wait for, uh, 
Apple staff in managed to announce the experience. So, um, can you turn out the sound on that laptop? <laughs> So Sebastian, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. So um, thank you very much for your talk. Um, maybe we can do a few questions, if there are some. I think we are a little bit behind the schedule, so maybe two or three questions. If we have some questions in the audience, you can come here to the microphone and <laughs> So this is live and this is delayed, but if you can hear your invite. Hi, my name is Markus, and thank you for your work on the Neo 900. I'm a huge fan. Um, just want to raise up the point that as soon as you do the issue that the modem is connected to the microphone directly is to save, save CPU power while you're running a phone call. So each monitoring solution that you might come up with will raise your power consumption. Well, uh, it's actually quite easy to, uh, to, to deal with that uh, because there are solutions like um, uh, audio codecs. Uh, it was actually already implemented in uh, all the um, open Moco and open Phonix devices. It's, it was also like that in Nokia N900. Uh, you can uh, just route the audio uh, configure the routing of the audio uh, in a way you like at some moment. So uh, when you don't uh, want to use the mm, modem to, to have a call, uh, you just keep the, mm, the connection to the microphone uh, disabled and in the moment you start the call, you enable that. Uh, of course, the, the software does it for you. So, um, so yeah, that. Uh, Thanks for the hint. That's enough. I'll look it up. The second point is, I'd like to tease you a bit. How often have you changed your estimation for the mm -hmm. layout of the board yet? How often? Well, well there were um, there were delays. Mm, it changed uh, uh, a bit already a few times. Um, it's actually hard to hard to tell. We don't have an um, exact um, exact um, estimated t time of arrival right now. We are, we, will, we are playing it a bit safe. Now, uh, as we uh, no noticed uh, as well, that our estimations are, aren't really uh, great. But mm, well, that's pretty common in projects like that. Uh, no, please notice that uh, in most of the mm, the hardware projects where uh, some phone is developed by uh, by some company. Uh, the project is mm, announced publicly uh, pretty late in the, mm, the development process. So um, any uh, delays, any uh, iterations, um, the situations where, uh, where um, already prepared stuff is scrapped and done from scratch, uh, which happen uh, from time to time, uh, uh, are simply not um, not no. known to the public. So uh, while the Neo 900 was actually announced at the very beginning, where well, nothing was there, uh, it just had to uh, to raise uh, support, and just then any work could could start. So uh, that's the. That's the downside of being completely open that we can a bit uh, sound like um, vaporware or, or something like that. But uh, rest assured that uh, the work is going on and we're progressing and uh, eventually uh, this, uh, all of this stuff will uh, see the light. Well, thank you for your comments. 
Thank you for the question. We have another question. No more questions? OK. So once again, thank you very much. Thank and you. Have a nice evening. Bye. Bye.